Hey everyone, it's Casual and we've got another tutorial for you. Today we're going to go over everything you need to know about item sorters. To get started, let's place a couple placeholder blocks so that we can put hoppers facing forward. Place the hoppers into your placeholder blocks like this. Then we can get rid of these yellow blocks. This is where our chests are going to go. We'll only put chests on the bottom two hoppers because the top hopper is going to be used to filter our items. To make this work, we need to generate a redstone signal based on the fullness of the top hopper. Build out three blocks from the middle hopper, and then add three blocks like this so that we can loop our signal around. Place a comparator behind the top hopper and run redstone all the way back. In the space on the bottom that we made, we're going to put a repeater, and in front of this block, place a redstone torch. That's really the whole circuit. What's happening is this comparator is checking the fullness of the top hopper, running a signal all the way down and around, hitting the repeater, and toggling this redstone torch. By default, this redstone torch is lit, which is powering the block above it and turning off this middle hopper. This middle hopper will stay off until the hopper above it is full enough to produce a strong enough redstone signal to toggle the torch. You'll see that when I put 8 stone into this top hopper, the comparator only outputs a signal strength of 1, so it's not strong enough to reach the whole circuit. We want to fill this hopper in a controllable way. We want the top hopper to filter based on one item type, so let's fill the last 4 slots of the hopper with a unique item. To make this unique item, you can grab any item, take it to an anvil, and rename it. In this case, I'm naming some stone filter. Take your new unique item and place it into the top hopper like this. And then we'll prime this filter with a stack of cobblestones. You'll see now that the signal is strong enough to turn off the torch, which allows items to flow through these hoppers. Now our bottom chest is being filled with cobblestone. Our redstone torch just turned back on. And this is because the signal strength isn't strong enough to go around the whole redstone circuit. This happens when your item stack becomes 41. It's useful to know that this top hopper will always hold 41 of the filtered item. This item filter setup is one block wide and tileable, so let's go ahead and make 7 more of them, making 8 in total. Start by placing your placeholder blocks. Place hoppers facing into them. And then we're going to work bottom up, starting with our repeaters, our platforms, redstone torches, extending our top platform, adding comparators, and filling in all of the rest with redstone. Now we need to prime these like we did before. We'll start by adding four filter blocks to each hopper. And then come around and get rid of your placeholder block. Fill in the open spaces with chests. And then we're ready to prime our hoppers. Place one stack into the first slot of each hopper for each item that you want to filter on. I like to put slabs in front of these hoppers so that the chests below still open. Then we can add item frames to see what's being stored in the chests below. There you have it. That's the basic setup of our item sorter. Now we need a way to put items into this sorter. The best way to have items run over the top of all of the top hoppers is by placing a water run on top of it. Let's place a perimeter of glass around the top hoppers like this. Place these three additional glass blocks so that items are forced to hit the first hopper. If you don't do this, you have a chance of missing the first hopper. Then place water here so it flows over the top of all the hoppers. When we throw items into this water, it'll pass over the hoppers and be sorted. If we look at the end of the run, we see that some of these items didn't get sorted though. What's happening is that we fed too many items into the sorter too quickly. 
The first slot in each hopper has 41 items in it already, so there's only room for 23 more at a time. If this number reaches 64, then there's no room in the hopper to grab the items and they continue flowing on. To catch any of these overflow items in the future, let's create a catch-all at the end of our run. This will capture and save any overflow of items that were fed too quickly, or any of our items that we don't have set to sort. The original problem was that we were feeding items too quickly, so let's solve that by building an auto dropper. You can see more about how to build this auto dropper in the auto dropper tutorial. This auto dropper will dispense any items that are in the dropper one at a time so that the sorter doesn't get overloaded. Place blocks around the output of the dropper so that the dropper doesn't miss our sorter. Placing blocks like this will make sure that the items drop into the first cell of water and run through our whole system. Let's also test our overflow by placing a chest into this dropper and see if it goes all the way to the end of the run. Since none of our sorter cells are looking for chests, it won't fall into any of the hoppers and it'll make it into our overflow chest. Lastly, so we don't have to interact with our dropper directly, we can make an input chest. Place the hopper facing into the dropper and put chests on top of the hopper. Anytime you place items in this chest, it'll fill the dropper and go through your item sorter. Now that we've built a working item sorter, let's take a look at a variation of it. You can still put your input chest up here like we did before, and maybe make some stairs or a second level to feed your item sorter. But I like to put my input chest next to my sorter. One way we can accomplish this is by putting a chest here and a stack of hoppers feeding into another dropper. This redstone circuit is an auto dropper circuit and it's the same one that we built before. Anytime there's items in the dropper, it'll automatically empty them into this water run, go over the packed ice, up a bubble column of water, into another water run, and feed our dropper on the top from the back side. Everything else is the same. Let's test it by putting some items into the input chest. The input chest is emptying itself into the water runs and going through our item sorter. This setup empties one item at a time, so it can be a little bit slow, but it'll never overload your system. There you have it, now you're ready to build your own item sorter. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. If you learned anything new, consider subscribing and ringing the bell for notifications. Thanks and we'll see you next time.